So one of the most difficult things for spiritual women that are single and dating or attempting to date is this inability to find balance in between both worlds. And you know what I mean? If you have a very strong relationship with your intuition, you are someone who has very strong clairvoyant premonitions, you're a dreamer, you know, things come to you, spirit comes to you when you're asleep, uh, comes to you through sense and vibration and you're just like okay I'm on I'm tapped on I'm tapped in and I can see and hear and feel everything right and and having that gift um that sometimes we have to wear in secrecy and being able to want to date someone for who they are without using our gift to see who they are and sometimes the challenge presents itself even more when spirit starts to say, okay, I need you to turn me on because I need to protect you. And this is where a lot of the sister girlies get caught up in the game because there will be times where we will not use our intuition because we don't want to be right or accurate about someone that we may have developed feelings for, that we have created some sort of distant futuristic vision for <laughs> in our lives and trying to see how this all can come together, right? And it's a challenge when there are, especially men, I don't know what your preference is, um, but sometimes it can be more men than women if you're dating that will start to use emotional manipulation to override your spiritual intuition. So I know for me recently, I was involved with somebody that I really was deeply, unbelievably in love with, okay? Like, that could have been my end-all, be-all, and I would have been fine, even given the structure of the situation. However, there came a point when I began to have feelings that were nudging me, and songs began to play that I knew the theme of the songs. And so I would present, you know, I would juxtapose questions around my intuition and what was going on with me and this person. And that person still chose to look me dead in my eyes and my soul and lie to me. And it put me in a position, I'm not gonna lie with you, because this is very, very recent, where I no longer feel that I trust myself. And I'm being very vulnerable and transparent here because I want you to continue to evolve and ascend. My whole theme in life for myself and that of which I share with people is self-mastery. You know, always think higher, vibrate higher, elect some sort of upward mobility in your life so that you can continue to transcend what you know to be your norm, right? And this particular situation just put me in a headspace uh, where I just feel like and I'm recovering, but I just feel like I no longer trust what I am capable of seeing and being when it comes to an intimate relationship. Because if someone has the gall <laughs> to look you in your face and lie to you and know that you are a spiritual person, that you are spiritually gifted and spiritually protected, and you do not back away from it, you are creating a havoc within your everyday life. And you do not deserve to have your love bound as a spiritual woman, right? We need freedom. We need transparency. We need to live our lives like fairies because the gift flows better. The, the gift is stronger and it makes our sense of being an overall, I'm sorry, overall human experience that much more exhilarating. And so when you have people that you're attracting, because most likely you're attracting hidden nature people or darker, lower vibrational people because you carry some sort of light, right? You most likely have healing modalities in your soul and something is uh, in your sensuality is calling out to them in a very lustful way, even if you don't present it that way, right? Lust can be translated into an enchantment. And so when you are free in that type of being and you attract 
people that have illnesses of the spirit, illnesses of the soul, illnesses and the pathology and the patterns of their family and their own cyclical behaviors, you become a refuge for their darkness. And then there's this entanglement that they begin to undergo because they want to be free because of your light and in your light, but they don't know how to live in their full transparency. And so as spiritual women, I just wanted to remind you per the spirit <laughs> that you have a responsibility to safeguard your heart. And I know that it can be challenging, especially girl, when we become intimate. I don't know about y'all, but when I'm intimate with somebody, like there's a lot of other things that happen to me and I become engaged with this person's really their soul. <laughs> And so I began to see them in ways that they probably would not want me to. And when that happens, it creates a disruption in me because I want to say, well, I know this about you. Let's heal it. Let's talk about it. But if that's not something that they have presented within themselves to deal with, how do you expect them to live transparently and honest and open with you? You know what I mean? So being spiritual, a righteous person, you know, an ethical person, you understand that being forthright in a relationship, in an intimate relationship, takes a whole lot of courage. It takes courage to tell someone, you know, this is who I am. Please accept me for who I am. It takes courage to be there and then grow with a person that exposes themselves, right? It takes courage to say, we're going to take on each other's baggage. And then that's without any gifts. But to my spiritual sisters out there, I want to let you know that it is imperative that no matter how strong you have feelings for a person and no matter how strong you see the potential in your mind's eye and you feel that this person has some sort of inner resolve where you can assist them and y'all can climb all these mountains and feats over their darkness, it is still up to that person to identify and if they are unable to identify, at least be willing to partner with themselves to liberate themselves. Healers are not responsible for healing other people. Healers are responsible for continuing to d uh, divulge themselves in their divinity and allow that expression to transform those that are attracted to it. You are the one that is in power of this gift when it comes to how it comes out. And so if you allow you know, your feelings to want to be in love and your feelings to want to be accepted as a spiritual woman, right? To overtake the reality that some people will manipulate you because emotions can blindside the gift, you will find yourself in trouble. And so I just wanted to kind of put this out here so that you won't be like me and continue to suffer the ailments of a beautiful gift because you want to help heal people. Continue to work on yourself, sis. Continue to find things and attributes about yourself that you can amplify. Continue to indulge yourself in your own sensuality and continue to nurture that relationship with your reproductive beauty and all the things that that entails and continue to build your intuition. The gift about being a woman, truth be told, is that the womb center, it really is a lie detector. It's like a living, breathing lie detector, right? And you can speak with it and it will speak back and just keep the energy going and flowing before you decide to pour into intimacy without regards to you being the gatekeeper of this beautiful gift that we have. So when you are dating, the number one thing as a spiritual woman that you need to be concerned with is being vigil vigilant with who you expose your gift to, how much you pour your gift into someone, and then making sure that the person that you are in attraction with has the ability to be transparent within themselves, to respect themselves so that they can respect you. <sighs> Dating season sucks, but you know what? We could keep it sexy. I love you and I'll see you next time.